Hi folks, Boogs here. Today I have yet another armor brief. But first, more thanks for your likes and comments on the last video. All interaction you give is appreciated. We just hit that sweet 1k subscriber milestone and it would not have been possible without you guys. So very, very big thank you there. In this episode, I have a special tank that is loved by many, especially myself. But that may just be a little bit of patriotism sprinkled on top. And it is the Challenger 2 main battle tank. It seems like I balanced history well in the last video, and so I'll try to keep it a similar length. One point I should mention though is that unlike other MBTs, the Challenger has gone through rather limited development and upgrading since it entered service in 1998. As such, the history section of this video will have a slightly different structure to the others. The Challenger 2 is the third of three British tanks to bear the name. The first was the A30 Challenger that was ordered in 1943. The second was Challenger 1, which served from 1983 to 2001. During the service of the Challenger 1, Vickers Defence began developing a successor as a private venture. After the design was submitted to the Ministry of Defence, just here, just the MOD we call it here, it was evaluated against the likes of the M1 Abrams and Leopard 2. Deciding to stick with the Challenger 2, in 1991, the MOD placed an order for 127 Chally 2s and 13 driver training vehicles. In 1994, a further 259 were ordered. Production began in 1993 and the first were delivered mid-94. However, in 1994, the Challenger 2 failed its acceptance trials and was forced to take part in the 1995 Progressive Reliability Growth Trials. After proving itself in these trials, the Challenger 2 was then accepted into service in 1998. The Challenger 2 is equipped with the L30A1 120mm rifled gun. The British choose to use a rifled barrel as they stand by their use of the high explosive squash head or just HESH round. Both commander and gunners have gyro stabilised optics with laser rangefinders, night vision and thermals. One key feature about the Challenger is its armour protection. That is, its turret and hull, second generation Dorchester armour. The details of this armour composition are still classified today. Similar to other tanks, the Challenger 2 has a nuclear, biological and chemical, or just NBC system, allowing the crew to completely seal themselves from the outside world even when engaging targets. The Challenger 2 is powered by a Perkins 26.1 litre V12 diesel engine, which gives the tank 1,200 brake horsepower at 2,300 RPM. This allows it to reach a speed of 60 km an hour on the road. The Challenger 2 in-game allows you to play four different roles. You've got driver, gunner, commander and loader. Let's start with the driver as always. The Challenger 2's driver's seat is similar to the, the T-72 in that it only has one window. This means that the driver is not a good spotter when compared to the M1A2 or Leopard. However, this is not an issue, as it will become apparent later. You have a top speed of 60Ks on the road in the Challenger 2. The tank is also quite easy co to control while driving as compared to something like the Leopard 2. In terms of driver strategy, it's the same old story. Hull down, hull down. However, the Challenger's turret is quite large and so you're still easily visible. If we look at the picture of the armour on the Challenger, we see that the lower glacis provides a very large target. And so, it is very easy to hit at long range. We also notice that the driver's port provides an easy ammo rack shot. All this reinforces the fact that you really need to hide the Challenger's large British beer belly when engaging enemy targets. And, like I said, hold down, hold down. Now, as a gunner in the Challenger 2, you have two unique rounds when compared to other tanks. Those are the Hesh round and the Smoke round. You have nine Hesh, which are in-game equivalent to high explosive anti-tank, three Smokes, which work a little like the Smoke canisters, but can be fired long range at enemy targets to blind them, 14 Sabo, two Smoke canisters, and 2,000 7.62mm coaxial machine gun rounds. The Challenger 2's gunner has a reload time for the main gun of 8 seconds. This isn't quite as quick as the Abrams, but it is an average reload when compared to the T-72 and Leopard. One great point about the Challenger is its super fast turret traverse rate of 7 seconds for a full 360 degree rotation. I couldn't believe it when I was testing this, but it is lightning quick. This makes following moving targets a breeze. 
Also, if you're caught off guard and need to snap to a target at your rear, then you can do this in record time. Another point to note about the Challenger's gunner's sights are that they provide excellent visibility. As a Challenger gunner, you will have no trouble in close quarters or long range engagements, as the field of view at minimum and maximum zoom is perfect. The zero on the Challenger is also perfect for the average engagement range, so in most scenarios it's just a matter of point and shoot. However, for close range and urban engagements, you need to be aware of the location of the gun. There are small circles to the left of the main aiming reticle that show where to aim when shooting targets at 100 meter and 50 meters. The 50 meter circle is located quite far off to the left and is sometimes difficult to see. It's best to familiarize yourself with this in the training range as there's nothing worse than rolling up on an enemy tank and your round going completely askew. Unlike the T-72 and Abrams, the commander seat in the Challenger does not have access to a remote-controlled machine gun. Instead, the commander has a regular periscope with three zoom levels. The commander also has the ability to snap the gunner to his view. However, this method of designating targets is not ideal, and you could be taking your gunner away from shooting something important. Instead, all members of the tank should be in fire teams and use their respective marks to designate targets for the gunner. The loader seat in the Challenger is unique as it is the only one which is not exposed to the outside. Also, the loader has access to the remote controlled machine gun. This is a 7.62mm gun with 500 rounds of ammunition, which makes it the weakest remote controlled gun on a tank as it has a similar amount of ammo as other guns but much less power. And with that being said, we can now try to summarize this. The Challenger 2 is by no means the strongest tank in squad. Its armor, while resistant against lat and hack kits, is vulnerable against tank rounds. It also has some vulnerabilities that can be easily exploited, such as the driver's window, giving access to the ammo rack. As such, the Challenger plays best at medium to close anti-infantry engagements. This is boasted by the sheer amount of visibility being gained by having essentially two commander seats. With a four-man crew, it's hard to sneak up on the Challenger unnoticed. In anti-armor engagements, the Challenger prefers longer range. This gives it a level playing field, where, it is, where its vulnerabilities are harder to hit. However, don't expect to be hunting armor all day long, as with it only 14 Sabre rounds, the Challenger will quickly have to resupply, so make your shots count. And there we have it, our fourth armor brief over with. Thank you so much for watching, and thank you for your likes and comments. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button to see more of these. As always, do leave a comment with what you thought and hit the link in the comments to join our Discord where you can vote for what vehicle you want to see next. Thanks again, Boogs out.